Hey everyone. Morning. So we're just on his way from good old Stoke-on-Trent. You've got to live somewhere, right? <laughs> Less <laughs> and we're than the going... good old. <laughs> and we're going down to Southampton and we are boarding the p and I was going to say I own it. No. We are boarding the P&O Arvia. We did that <laughs> 13 months ago. Yeah, so P&O Iona was our first cruise ship. Yep. We've done the P&O Britannia and now we're doing the P&O Arvia. Yeah. So, so she is the sister ship of the Iona Yeah, now. but this is their latest, newest yes. ship in the fleet. We are uh, on this for two weeks. Yes, yeah. Going round, the, they call it the Med. It, it's mostly uh, Spain. I think we go one place in France. Marseille. Marseille, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, we've got like an overnight in Barcelona, which would be nice. Because we, we've already done Barcelona. We've got a video on that. So we haven't got filmed that. So it'll be nice for us as well to have a bit more of a holiday on this cruise. Yeah, yeah. We're going a few new places. We're going to Cadiz in Spain, which yes. looks amazing. We've never been there before. And also Valencia. We've never been there before. So we're going to be coming at you with so much content from the Arvia itself, as well as the ports that we stop off as well yep. so there's so much content to come but i'll tell you something for nothing we're going on there determined to have an amazing time obviously we'll review everything oh yeah yeah but we're going on with an opened positive mind because why not you live once right so we've got exactly. to make the most of it yeah so we're about halfway down now i uh am sweating because we've got no air con on at the moment and all the windows are up so it's not noisy it's red hot today stacy's got a lovely well, not lovely for me. Cold brewy, Starbucksy drink. I love cold brew. <laughs> but as you might know, if you watch your videos, we collect the Starbucks mugs. We've never actually brought the England one, so we thought, while we're here, we might as well pick it oh, up. We've, we've always been like, technically, does that count if you have the English mug? Yeah. But then it's always a starting destination for wherever we go to. So yeah, so we we'll collect we... it with the others. We're obviously going to go through the process of embarkation for the Arvia and things like that yeah. just to if you're going to be boarding the ship yourself it just gives you a good idea yeah. of what to expect do we have got a really really good deal for this trip but we'll let you know yeah, yeah. how much we've paid as we get further into the I video just thought of something you haven't forgot anything yeah we have what we haven't brought sellotape to attach the luggage labels oh, no. So we better love you and leave you because we'll have to hurry up now. We'll oh, have to go we, Southampton and we did, find some. We did this last time. I told you the get the first time, tape. First time on the Iona, we forgot the cellar tape. So yeah, we best go and do uh, blue tack in the glove box. Blue or tack ain't going where? Blue tack. I said to you blue get the cellar tape. Oh, it's all on me, isn't it? Right. <laughs> we'll see you down there. We'll go and argue about the cellar tape. I told you get it. It was you. <laughs> Right, we got some cellar tape because somebody left it at home. Uh, we stopped <laughs> off at a service station. We're about 43 miles away, but it's shown a lot of traffic, and we have hit a few chunks of traffic on the way down as well. So. I'm, I'm nodding my head like, yeah, I've been asleep. Honestly, I'll go asleep anywhere. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I've been asleep. As we get there, we'll show you where we're going to park again and how much that has cost yeah. because we've got it a bit cheaper. A lot cheaper. Compared to what Piano yeah. wanted for their official parking, but we'll show you that as we yeah. get down we best hurry up. Yes, let's, let's go. go. Right, so it's 12.37 now. We left Stoke-on-Trent about 7.30 this morning and we are just arriving at the port of Southampton. I think that's a Norwegian oh, cruise that's the line. Prima. Oh, that's the brand new Prima that's in there. We did look at that one. <laughs> but uh, it's a bit figgledy-piggledy with... It comes from here, goes to Iceland, and then we'd have to fly back to, I think it was Heathrow, and then drive back to Stoke. Uh, it was too much of a, a faff, <laughs> so we did this one instead. So anyway, yeah, we finally arrived. So we're going to park at the West Quay Shopping Centre. Now, we did that last time that we went from Southampton because P&O car parking, which CPS. is CPS, yeah, yeah right. 
they wanted £243, <laughs> whereas at the West Key Shopping Centre, it cost £5 a day. So if my maths is correct, for 15 days, that works out at £75. Yeah, so it'd be like £75, and then what we'll do is we'll get the Uber across, which last time was about £8, it might be a bit more because it's a Sunday. So even if it was, say, £12.50 each way, it's going to be £100 to park for the two weeks and the taxi over there. So we're saving £140-ish, pounds, so we might as well do it. <laughs> Bargain, but yeah, the West Key Shopping Centre now is just around the corner, so we're going to park up there and then head to the Ocean Terminal to see the RV. Right, so the car's all parked up. See, and this is why we do these videos so you can learn from us thickos who are lastminute.com and taping the luggage labels to the suitcases in the car park. So, ideally, do it before you leave the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, ideally, in a perfect world, yeah, but. This isn't us, <laughs> we're always like this. So we're gonna, well, Kev's gonna stick them on and then we'll go and call for an Uber, I guess. We got down the lift with all the cases. I have just, I'm trying to order an Uber XL. Uh, we, we normally get picked up by this decathlon if you're interested in doing this. You come down the B lifts and uh, yes. comes out <laughs> here. This seems the easiest place to pick up. But, if, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, we go. There's one down the ocean, near the ocean terminal, so hopefully he takes the job. It's costing about five, seven and a half pounds. A normal Uber was coming up at six, but because we've got four cases. Two backpacks. Two backpacks and two big bellies. That's well, that's after the cruise. <laughs> that's after the cruise, <laughs> not maybe yet. Maybe before actually, but I honestly, I'm so excited. I can't, I can't wait to see the ship. So yeah, let's get down to the ocean terminal now. We're not having much luck today. First traffic. Now the Ubers won't accept the jobs. I've gone from an Uber XL, nobody accept that, to an Uber, a normal Uber, nobody's accepting that. There's one down the road. Oh, we've finally got one. Oh, what's he in? Oh, he's in a, a Picasso, so we might fit all the cases in that one if he drops the seats. We'll be okay. Hopefully. We'll be okay. Right, while we're waiting here, we'll tell you what you need to print off and bring with you. Obviously, <laughs> passports, that's a must. But yeah, that's very important. What? Boarding pass, and then luggage tags. That's pretty much all you need print off. Unless, obviously, he says they want you to show uh, travel insurance, but we just have a PDF copy on our phone, so you could always just show them on there. That's never yeah, been a problem. never been asked, and if we have, like Kev said, we just got it on the phone. Now, I will show you that, as usual, Kevin Stacy style, we've got 48 cans of pop in that little suitcase there, 48. And I know a lot of you ask, do we carry them on or do we check in check it in with the other suitcases and we check it in with the normal suitcase we suitcases we don't take it on as hand luggage no so yeah and then it's just waiting for us outside the cabin with the rest of the luggage now you might hopefully. think you might think 48 cans of coke is a lot but <laughs> it does say on the side 24 is i think it was 8.3 kilos so that's only 16 and a half kilos so we're fine don't worry about that because you can take as much luggage as you want on these cruises well you know just as much as you can fit in your cabin but you, each individual case can't be heavier than 23 kg yeah. because obviously people lifting them one hour later we're finally here <laughs> it's taken forever honestly that took forever get that open <laughs> So we just dropped the luggage off because it was really, really busy and we've yeah. gone past our time that we yes. were able to board. So we just uh, dropped it off quick. But as you can see, the lovely Arvia is there behind. She looks beautiful. Yes. <laughs> she looks uh, very busy. Yes. Let's put it that way. I think this cruise is very full. Yeah, we're going to ask. I always like to ask when we get on board how full it is. So once we've asked, we will let you know. Yeah. But like I said, we've gone past our time. So let's stop standing around here and let's actually get on the ship. Come on. We're all checked in now. We walk straight in from outside. We had to queue up about 15 minutes on the inside. And it's taken about five minutes to get through security. A quick tip. Make sure you do your own photos of the tow that go on your cruise card yeah. because if you don't, they take them here and it's more flattering to do yourself at home because they get like your three chins on if you get them here. One other tip, don't put your boarding passes away. You will need it about eight times, okay? Ten. Ten. Eight or ten. Right, we're on now. Um, there was a guy waiting to tell us where our muster station was, so we're just going to go straight there. We are muster station C. Casino. Casino. He will tell you, so uh, we're just going to go straight there and get that out of the way first. So we've just been to our muster station, like I've said before, ours was the casino. All they do is scan your boarding card, and then they said when you get to your cabin, you've got to watch the quick safety video. So, so far the ship looks absolutely gorgeous, like really, really modern and nice. I can't wait to explore it more. But where are we going to go, Kev? For buffet. I was going to 
to say, if you've watched our videos before, it wasn't the gym, was it? It was the buffet, so let's go. Right, we did say we were coming straight to the buffet. We never lie. The selection seems better than the last time when we were on the uh, Pinot Britannia yeah, on the buffet. it actually looks it all right. It's not actually too busy either. No, I you, think there's a lot of seating. Yeah, yeah you thought it was going to be manic. Yeah, because I was thinking, oh, do we go? And I thought, oh, we'll risk it. But I know there is some outdoor seating somewhere. We'll eventually find that. We're yeah. on for two weeks. Well, we're going to do a uh, video, a more thorough video on the buffet anyway. So then hopefully we'll be able to sit outside and show you the seating for that. That's If you watched the video earlier, which I'm guessing you did if you're here now, when we collected the um, cellar tape, I said to Stace, I can smell pasties. I fancy a uh, pasty, you, you honestly. Did. It's fate. They've got little beef, uh, beef and veg pasties on. <laughs> so I've gone been for a bit of everything really. I've had a pasty as well, like Kev, and then I've had a beef baguette. And then I've had some roast potatoes and veg, I think. I've gone for like all meat. So I've got two little pasties, some haddock, some bratwursts, uh, smoked trout, chicken. Now the chicken was all like chunky bone in stuff. So if that puts you off, just double check the meat and some potato salad. Yeah, because I put the chicken on my plate at first and it was like all on the bone. So I gave it Kevin, he's ended up with his. <laughs> I'm actually craving a pasty now. It smells quite nice. Is it beef and veg? It's actually more beef than veg. I would say there was no veg in it. It's actually quite nice. The pastry is really nice as well. It's not like a cheap Greg's pasty, so we say. So we're all finished in the buffet now. We've only had one plate each because we're not going to be greedy. Plus, we're going to go to the Keys later on for dinner where we can have some fish and chips. Because Kev doesn't really fancy putting his trousers on tonight to go in the main dining room. No. So we're going to keep it casual tonight. It's it's too warm. It's been a long day as well. Like It took yeah. longer to get down here than it should have. I just fancy a bit of a chilled night tonight. We're only for 14 nights. So we've got plenty of time to go to the main dining room. But I think we're going to head to the cabin in a minute and see if they've uh, dropped our luggage off and we better watch the safety video. Oh yeah, safety video. Forgot about that. And they also, that's where they leave your cruise cards, hopefully anyway. So we'll see you at the cabin. They have left our cruise cards just in the little pocket outside your door there. I will double check it is the right ones. It does say in the, on the envelope, check them because any details that are wrong on your card, you've got to give them a call and I'm guessing they'll correct it and give you new ones. So bear me a second. But yeah, they're right. There's one Stacy and one Kevin. Did he work? Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's try him. Let's make sure that's the most important thing. Never mind the names. Yes, we're in. We've just watched the safety video. We have got a inside cabin, but we're gonna do a separate cabin tour on that to show you more in detail. We have just met the cabin steward and he's just frightened the life out of us because he's he knocked on, very nice guy. He knocked on and said, um, there's been an incident in your cabin with the former guests that were in there before you. And he went, there's a big red stain on the carpet at the side of your bed. I was thinking like, he just said there's been an incident. I thought, what on earth has happened? Like, should there be police tape or something across the cabin doors? But no, he did say that the former guests have spelt red wine on the sangria. floor. Sangria. Yeah. next to the bed. And they didn't actually tell anybody for two days. So it stained the carpet. They have given it a good clean. And Kev, is, Kev hates the smell of wine. And we just can't smells smell like vinegar to me. Yeah, he was very apologetic. He did say they've tried to, obviously it's red wine and it stains anyway, but then it's been left there for a few days. So he was very apologetic. He did say they'd give it a good clean and they'll come back again tomorrow and keep scrubbing away at it. So very naughty of the former passengers to do that and not say anything. So yeah. But at least he told us. Yeah, at least he told us, yeah. And we have, we have looked at it and it's just how we went and there's been an incident in your cabin. I was like, what? But yeah, it's just somebody spelt the red wine. <laughs> yeah, there's no juicy gossip for Stace. No. Could have made some up, couldn't we? Can imagine like the thumbnail. There's been a murder. How do you say it? There's been a murder. I can't do the accent. There's been a murder. That's it. Was that off like Cracker or something? I'm not sure. I, I just know it's off Royal Family when they're doing it on the, the... Dave's going, there's been a murder. I think he's saying it off mm. a TV show though, isn't he? I'm not sure, but there's, yeah. No murder. Nothing dramatic has no happened. No murders. No, it's just red wine. It's angry. Right, so we're just going on pack now. <sighs> I always think this is the worst part of embarkation date. Does anybody else feel like that? But if you were, if you noticed earlier, you may have noticed when we were getting out of the car that we got a new luggage set. So uh, Level 8 reached out to us and uh, gifted us this amazing three-piece set. So Level 8 are an American firm based in New York. 
they do luggage, they do backpacks, they do like their organisational packing cubes, which I know Stacey said some people absolutely go nuts over these packing cubes. So we chose this three piece set. We like the three piece sets because they can store inside each other. So it's not just like saves you space in your home, but uh, it also saves you space in your hotel room, in your cabin, because this is where these will be stored for the uh, duration of this cruise, straight under that bed. It's nice to have a three piece set that you can go inside each other for easy storage. But what we do like about these cases is that each side is zipped. So what it does, you know, you've washed and ironed all your clothes nice and fresh to come on holiday. And it, what it helps do is just keep it all compact so it's not moving around. Oh, and I know a few of you have commented as well and said to me, would you mind doing a packing video? when you're next to a cruise and we haven't done it this time but let me know in the comments below if that's something like do you want to pat with me for my cruise holiday it's not something i thought of before but if you want to see it i will gladly do one so at first with these cases we were a bit like mm, it's not got the expandable zip that we've had on other cases because we do like that because you can fit more in there but it doesn't matter because it has got a lip around the outside of about an inch so you can get more in there underneath and you've still got the room to then close it so even though it hasn't got the expandable zip you, you can fit more in there what we did as well is um we packed clothes on top of this mesh yes <laughs> to make most of that lip because we didn't want to bulk it up too much on the inside so yeah, we packed clothes on, on top there. and then it still closed with i think i probably put a, a good 10 pairs of pants and <laughs> some other things on top of there yeah, as well. Yeah, still closed. So I will say the interior of the case as well is really, really nice quality. The mesh in there is nice and thick and the lining as well is also really nice quality. I know we've had cases before when it's been that nylon-y lining and it's ripped. All it takes is like a stiletto shoe or something to catch it on there and your case is ripped. So this seems like really, really nice quality. So it also comes with the X-strap compression strap in the large and medium cases, not the small one. And again, it helps to keep everything nice and compact and it is adjustable as well, which I like about it because obviously if you were traveling light, there wasn't as much in, you can still pull it tighter and it'll keep everything compact. If you're thinking, Gonna buy these cases are they gonna get all scratched up nice and easy and that no these are made from a german buyer macrolon material which is both anti-scratch and lightweight and then just on top of each three of the cases as well is a built-in tsa approved lock it's a free dial combination lock both uh, zips just pop straight in there as well and then they just pop straight out easy peasy and the wheels it's got an eight wheel design all of them are 360 degree wheels honestly they are whisper quiet when we had these in the house on our laminate flooring couldn't even hear them i didn't know stacy was moving them they glided over that car park uh, concrete as well and then in this cabin on the carpet they, they glided over them as well it's like being on ice for once I didn't moan that I had to pull my own suitcase. No. Yeah, so the company is Level 8. We will leave a link in the description down below to their website. They do have loads of different styles and colours on there. If your cases are knackered and you're after some new ones, you know, that are got a good quality ones that are gonna last you a few years down the line, then it's just another option for you there to go and check out because they do ship worldwide as well. So there you go. But we've got to unpack these now. It's always the worst part. Yes. Cause especially because <laughs> we crammed a lot of clothes in these cases. <laughs> so uh, let's get unpacking, eh? But yeah, thank you Level 8 for giving us the new cases. So we're all unpacked now. Tis an effort unpacking these cases. Though, you, you said before, it's the worst thing. No. Packing on disembarkation. I know you can just fling to come it home. all in, can't you? Yeah, well, that means you're coming home. This means yeah, we're yeah. arriving. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point, actually, yeah. And e any way you're packing is always yeah. a pain. <laughs> can't a cabin shoe just do it for you? I know. I'll Take the reward, wouldn't you? Give him a bit extra tip. <laughs> I'm really you know, just, come on, mate. Uh, no, so it's close to sail away time now. Yes. So Stacey's having a little ponder in the old Horizon magazine because it doesn't. Uh, you know, tell you mm. what's going on where I've very seen, well. I've seen it somewhere. <laughs> Is it six-ish? Six-ish, where's that? Uh, Normally after five and before seven. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> okay, Kevin. Yeah, I found it. So yeah, six till six forty-five. It says "Sail Away" sounds with Gabrielle Latisse. Live melodies on the piano from Gabriel as we sail away in the Amber Lounge. So is there nothing going on outside? I don't know. We'll go up there, have a look anyway. We'll I go prefer and see. it to be outside. Yeah, it's a lovely day, so yeah. yeah, I think it'd be outside. But we'll go up, have a look anyway. And like we said, when we were in the buffet, we want to eat in the Keys tonight. Ooh, so and big old Yorkshire puddings. Yes, so shall we go up? Oh, I'm so excited. What, <laughs> what else have we forgot? What? We forgot salad tape and we forgot cranberry sauce. I can't have a Yorkshire uh, pudding without cranberry sauce. I don't like cranberry sauce. sauce anyway. I hope so we've got some. I'm not bothered. So we're just gonna go in a little walk around the ship, just exploring it, and we've just come up to the very top, and they've got a really cool mini golf course, and they've also got like a climbing section above us there. But it's very windy now, and I don't think I'd like be doing the climbing thing while it's this windy. So hopefully it's a bit more tame on the day that we do it. Right, so we are just in the atrium now. We haven't got a clue where we're going. We don't know what's going on. It's not the clearest. But we've just come in and there's one of these like acrobat rope things. We don't know if this is for tonight or if this is for uh, another night. Surely this is for something going on tonight. You'd think anyway. So Stacey's just looking in the horizon now trying to figure it out. I don't know what that climbing thing is for. There's nothing in here that implies it's for. There's a violinist on tonight in the atrium. Surely isn't going to be doing it sat on there. You never know. So we're sailing away now. Uh, we did go to reception and uh, we've asked another uh, member of staff around the ship as well there's no actual sail away party going on there's no. some p like say i think we said earlier there's a pianist in the atrium that's it there's no like outside party there's no dj nothing but they did say that there is a sail away party on the third day yeah. after we've left the first port which is la Caruna. Yeah. Which seems a bit pointless to me really just have it on the day that it set sail from southampton yeah. that's the start of your cruise yeah. so there's technically she said she really didn't know what it was she was like there's a bit of something on on the third day mm -hmm. so it just seems a bit strange to me but yes oh well <laughs> and then we did also ask stacy's yes. going to get up on her phone we asked at reception how many people were on board the guy said 5800 Take it away, Stacey. Right, okay, so I thought, hmm, 5,800, because I thought the capacity of the RV was 5,200. So I've just Googled it, and it does say that the normal operating capacity for the RV is 5,200, yep. but even though her maxi maximum capacity, if third and fourth berths are used, is 6,264. So there is a lot of passengers on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are quite surprised how many kids are on. Yeah, Loads not, yeah. of kids, considering it's, you know, end of June, not school holidays, we didn't expect so many kids. <laughs> I suppose people are just paying them fines yeah. and having a cheaper holiday. Now, but... the wind is picking off. Yes. <laughs> uh, I hope it's not going to be as bad as that video Stacey showed me of that Royal Caribbean in, in, was it in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah, where there was like sunbeds flying yeah. around and stuff. Let us know if you've seen it on the news, but it looks absolutely horrific. Yes. But, you know, we'll let you know. This is just the embarkation video. As the week goes on and it comes to, we're doing like restaurant videos and things to do on the ship, we'll let you know how it gets on with 5,800 passengers on. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed, it's not too bad. No. Now, most of the stuff, uh, just to mention, we will go into more depth. Most of the things you have to book uh, on the My Holiday app mm -hmm. website, most stuff's virtual queue. There's some things you can pre-book before all day restaurants wise. Yes, but I will say now that, so, if you wanted to watch tonight's show in the Headliners Theatre, there was an option to book it before you come on the cruise, about yes. a couple of weeks before. Yes. If you hadn't have done that, I did look when we got into the cabin first thing and already it sold out. So, you yeah. know, if we did, we don't really want to watch it wherever the show is anyway, but no. if we did, we wouldn't be able to. <laughs> so we're just pretty much just going to sit here, watch, yeah. sail away a little bit, you know, soak in this little bit of sun on our pale, pale, stoky bodies. <laughs> and uh, then we're just gonna go to Keys yes. and have a bit of a munch. Right, so we've come to the Keys. We haven't had to queue too long and we have come to eat it outside because it's an absolute gorgeous evening and we are setting sail now to La Corona. Yeah. We'll arrive there in a few days. Yes, now we did say we were in you know, that hungry, <laughs> but we've had fish and chips, 
and just a little bit wraps from the <laughs> the Yorkshire pudding place. So uh, if these are as good as they were on the Iona, because then fish and chips were delicious on the Iona, they were really nice. So Stacey's got a little pot of vinegar over there because it's a bit awkward. This is just one big pot of vinegar and you have to tip it in a little one. So uh, these chips are red hot, so I've already burnt my mouth on them. The wrap's all right. This fish looks delicious though. We aren't going to review it now. We are going to do a full Keys video because I believe you can come here for breakfast as well. So that'd be nice to change from the main dining room and the buffet. Split, you know, mix it up a little bit. So we will do every meal that you can have there in a full review. I have gone for a, I've had fish and chips and curry sauce, but I have gone for a vegan meatball wrap as well. So there is vegan options on there. So that's good. We finished all that. And as you can see, Stacey's disappeared. She just went, oh, I could just eat some more chips. So she's gone and get some more chips. She'll say she, she hasn't, but she has. She's definitely gone and get more chips. Wow. Look who's back. <laughs> Look at that. Another fish and chips. I can't believe you've had a fish as well. You said you were just no, getting chips. You're having the fish no, hey, don't lie. The chips. Don't lie to these people, okay? The chips are good though. Oh, I felt so thick just I went. I said, Can I have um fish, chips and please peas? Oh my and god. And I was like he <laughs> just looked at me and I was like <laughs> you kinda guessed what I meant. Oh. It's like what a thicker. But honestly, it's like feeding time at the zoo in there, it's absolutely manic. But come sit outside, like look behind me, you know, it's like so empty, but like say it's a lovely evening, just come and sit outside. I'm like, do people, there is windows, do people know this, like, seats outside? I can't believe you've had another fish and chips. Don't lie to the people, I, look, 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 there's only one tray, no, 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 no. No, I look. said I'm going to get some more chips, and as I was going up, he we went, well, just get fish and chips and no, I'll have the fish. Yes, you did. Oh, you are such a liar. So I'm going to eat me fish, chips and please. See? She's going to eat her fish, oh. chips and peas. <laughs> no, told I'm you. Not. No, I'm eating me chips. I told you. Shh. So I think we're going to end the embarkation video there now. Yep. So far, so good. It does look a really, really lovely ship. Yep. There is a lot of passengers on, as we said before. So we'll let you know as the week goes on. Yes. How we get on with that. But just to be upfront, because we like to say how much we pay for things, and uh, you know, a few of you ask you, how would you get your deals? Yeah. Now we've been through a company called Cruise Nation. We've used those for five of our seven cruises. Yes, and it's not because we're particularly loyal to them, we just shop around for the best deal yeah. and they always seem to come out on top. So for the two weeks, for both of us, yeah. with an inside cabin, no drinks package, it was £1,566 for the both of yes. us for two weeks. So an absolute fantastic yeah, price. Yeah, because I know we did work it out. If we don't have the select fare, we don't care where our cabin is. No. We, we, we don't need the, uh, you know, the parking or the coach ride down, all those things that come with the select fare. So with the select fare, the top drink package for two weeks and a balcony, it was close to £6,000. Yeah, because I think it was £1,000 extra each just for the balcony. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of you say, oh, you know, how do you get these good de uh, deals? But if you aren't bothered about, you, I mean, you work hard for your money. How you want to spend it is up to you oh, and yeah. that's absolutely fine. But you can't expect if you're having drinks packages, balconies and, so, you know, select fare, then for it to be, it's going to be more than 1566 yeah. Um So, you know, we're obviously, you know, we're doing YouTube, we try and review as many cruises as we can. Yes. So we personally have to cut back on certain things. So if you aren't bothered about that either, no. then you could get for £1,566. No. <laughs> exactly. But I'm very full after not That's eating that fish. Stuffed. You should be stuffed. You had another fish and chips. Don't let a lie he had to the you. Fish. I didn't have a batter up, bit of batter off because I didn't have nothing. But no, it's been a long day. I'm uh, ready to just chill out now. Yeah. And uh, maybe watch the sunset go down. I think we will. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to love you and leave you there. But like we said before, there's loads more content coming for this RV trip. This is just the first one. There's well, going to be gonna, loads more. We're going to explore every inch yes. of this ship and also off the ship as yeah. well. So if you want to see all that, subscribe. Give us a like while you're down there. Leave us a comment about the RV if you want to know anything about it. Got any questions? Yada yes. yada yada. Anything we'll... about the embarkation process? Yeah. Just yeah, just let us know. So yeah, my arms are hurting. The wind's picking up. <laughs> I'm gonna love you and leave you. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.